Fourteen and a half minutes. That is as fast as it can be done. In your car, perhaps. A car is only as good as its driver. I will beat you to the Capa de Mari any time you like. Want to bet? What are we waiting for? Every government has its Secret Service branch. America at CIA, France, Desi M. Bureau, England, MI5. A messy job? Well, that's when they usually call on me or someone like me. Oh, yes. My name is Drake. John Drake. Men die every second of the day. But when a secret agent dies, be it by accident, senile decay, or a cold in the head, it is a matter for official speculation. So when Tony crashed, I was not surprised that I was asked to fly 6,000 miles to investigate. Morning. Senor? Uh, my name is Drake, John Drake, attorney in New York City. I, I represent the late Mr. Tony Costello. I'm in. Thank you. Such a tragedy, senor. Yes, he was a very good friend of mine. Uh, look, I have some letters of probate here which authorize me to inspect his possession. Perhaps you'd like to see them, Captain. You'll be pleased to hear that Santa Maggianini gave your friend a fine funeral. The whole town was there. I was buried already? He was trapped in the car, senor, the flames. Yes, I know. I'd like to see a full report of the accident later on, if it's all right. That can be arranged, but uh, uh, you will need permission of the court. These are in order. Thank you. Uh, you will also need the court's permission to get into the apartment of the deceased. Uh, leave it to me, Mr. Drake. I shall handle it for you. Uh, that's very kind of you. Uh, I'll call back later on. Huh? Uh, the court sits again on Friday. If you call in four days from now, Mr. Drake, I shall have it ready for you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid that I don't have that much time, Captain. We must be patient, Mr. Drake. We cannot ignore the court. Oh, no, of course not. But surely a man of your experience could find some means of um, circumventing these things, uh, Captain? Huh? Mr. Drake, I must advise you to have no such thoughts. Good day. No, no, of course not. Good day. Thank you very much, Captain. I'm obliged. <laughs> As I broke into Tony Costello's apartment, somebody ran out in a hurry. I had no right to be there. I guess he didn't either. Let's go and find him, Joey. Where did you go? Come on. Good morning. Yes? I'd like to speak to the person who went into this apartment. I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Nobody I came followed in. this person right here. I have a, a message for this person. Nobody came in here. Very important. Look, who are you? What do you want? I told you. Well, I'm sorry. Nobody came in here. Now, would you please go away? Oh, may I uh, 
introduce myself. My name is Drake. I'm Mr. Tony Costello's attorney. Oh. Tony? Yep. Do you know him? Yes. Well, I'm here to uh, clear up his affairs. Were you a friend of his? Yes, I was. Oh, good. And perhaps you can give me some information. Um, my credentials. May I come in? Hi, hello, do you know? You can see there's no one here, Mr. Drake. Now, what do you want? Oh, all sorts of things I'd like to know. Your name, for instance. Harris. Joe Harris. Good morning, Miss Harris. Why are you so nervous? Nervous? Yes, on edge. What's the trouble, Miss Harris? Did you know Tony well? We were going to be married, Mr. Drake. I'm sorry. He was a friend of mine, too. A very old friend. Well, Miss Harris, I went round to Tony's apartment. As I uh, entered one way, somebody else went out the other. Juno followed that somebody else. I followed Juno, and Juno came right here to your door. She wasn't following anyone, Mr. Drake. She lives here. I've been keeping her since Tony died. She keeps going back to see if she can find him. I come in this afternoon to take her away, and I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to miss her. Are you going away, Miss Harris? Yes, today. I wonder, Miss Harris, if you'd be kind enough to tell me a little about Tony's accident. I wasn't there, Mr. Drake, but I don't think it was an accident. You see, Tony was a fast driver, but he was also a very good driver. He traveled that stretch of road over a hundred times before. And it's not only that, but there was a change in Tony a few days before the crash. It's, I don't know, it's something I can't explain. Thank you. And now, Miss Harris, if you'll tell me a little bit about yourself, how you come to be living in the wilds of Sicily, for instance. I came over on a holiday two years ago. It was all very new and different, and I guess I fell in love with it. I got a job, and I, well, then I met Tony. I worked for Delano, the uh, fish canners. At least I did. I handled their American correspondence. Everything was going very fine, and then the day after Tony died, they dismissed me. They gave me three months' pay, my fare back to the States, but they didn't give me any reason. And since that time, I have a feeling that I'm being watched. I, uh, I'm frightened, Mr. Drake. That you're still here? I told you I was leaving today. You know something, Miss Harris? I don't think Tony's death was an accident either. And you know something else? I would suggest to you, Miss Harris, that you don't go home. That you stay here for a day or two and uh, help me to find out exactly what did happen. Well, all my arrangements are made. Don't you want to find out, Miss Harris? Of course I do. Good. Well, I suggest that we start by going to the place where Tony crashed. You'll better wait here, huh? Miss Harris, you know this man? Yes, he's John Drake. He's a friend of Tony's. Well, then perhaps he will explain what he is doing trespassing on my land. This is Senor Hugo Delano. We're on his estate. Oh, oh, somebody just took a shot at me on his estate. This is a game reserve, Mr. Drake. Many of my friends enjoy the sport here. Perhaps one of them mistook you for fair game. I'm out of season. May I? Not guilty. I'm sorry. I advise you to leave immediately before somebody else makes a mistake and takes a shot at you. A thousand apologies, Mr. Delano. Thank you. Is uh, 
Uh, is that the Delano you used to work for? Yes. He owns almost everything around here. Huh? Where's Juno? Did you let her out? No. You left the car exactly as it is now? Exactly. You sure? I'm positive. Now, there's a strange thing. Maybe she got out the window. Ah, very strange. You know, I think I'd like to take another look at Tony's apartment. I told you not to come back till Saturday. You can forget the court order, Captain. Huh? It's no use my searching an empty apartment, is it? Empty? What? Yes. Someone's been there. They've removed all the furniture, the pictures, everything. Am I to understand, Mr. Drake, that you've already been there without an order? That's right. This sort of behavior can get you into trouble, Mr. Drake. Oh, it could, yes. But it could also get other people into trouble, too, oh. wouldn't it? I mean, all sorts of questions are going to be asked. Who took the furniture? Why was it taken? Incidentally, I ran into a man Named Delano, Hugo Delano. Signor Delano, yes. Uh, do you know him? Uh, of course. He is a respected citizen. He is very wealthy. I mean, did you know him personally? No, oh, Mr. Drake, he moves in a different world to mine. I've only met him on rare occasions. Yeah. Only on very rare occasions. I'm sorry I interrupted you, gentlemen. You must have a great deal to talk about today. Ah, what's the idea? Oh, well, you drove right into me. You gonna take driving lessons or you're blind or something? What's happened? He ran into my truck, just straight into it. I was standing there and he just ran straight into it. I want you to charge him with dangerous driving. All, all right, right all right, Patello. What have you got to say, Mr. Drake? Well, I'd like to say a great deal, but it won't do any good. You see, he backed into me. I backed into him? This man is a liar. What a liar! I saw what happened, Captain. Oh, Signor Delano. I'm afraid Mr. Drake cannot have been looking. He drove straight into the truck. You see, an independent witness. This man is a liar. How do I know you paid me? All right, all right, I'm sorry, Mr. Drake, but uh, an independent witness. I have to arrest you. Uh, but don't worry. If there's been a mistake, it can be put right when the court sits. In three days' time? Yes. I see you understand the situation. I understand it very well. Well, then, come with me, Mr. Drake. No, one moment, please. You see, this isn't really my car, and I wasn't driving it. Uh, Mr. Drake, there is an independent... Uh, independent or not, I'm not a magician. I can't start a car without an ignition key. Uh, what do you mean, ignition key? I haven't got an ignition key. Would you like to search me? Oh, Miss Harris, would you like to show the gentleman the ignition key, please? Mike, gentlemen, uh, shall we uh, go on phone for another car? Why didn't you arrest him? Senor Delano, he is an American citizen. If I'm to frame an American, I must frame him properly or I lose my job. Only what about the way until tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow your troubles will be over, but not mine. No, I, I must have an independent, reliable witness. Am I not reliable? Yes, but uh, tomorrow you will say one thing and the girl will say another. Suppose he were to be involved in a brawl. Well, in that case, you know, Delano, it would be my duty to arrest anybody concerned. It can be arranged. I'm in their way. They want to have me locked up. Uh, 
uh, you're sitting in Signor Bartello's seat. Yes, I always sit on that seat. Oh, I beg your pardon. Would you mind moving down, please? Thank you. <laughs> now you're sitting in my seat. That's my seat, eh, Bart? Yes, that's your seat, Bruno. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Once more, please, thank you. Oh, the seniors traveled. Satirely and half. See, Bruno, this is a hat. <laughs> With feathers. <laughs> feathers are for the birds, no? Maybe I ought to go back to the Tyrol. <laughs> Quiet. You better go, senor. Oh, same again, please. Have a drink. Good for the nerves. And for the nerves. Soda, senor. Thank you. Allow me, senor. Say when. Oh, oh, a thousand pardons, senor. The senor is looking for trouble. Why don't you leave him alone, eh? Why don't you mind your own business? Ah, pardon me. Uh, I haven't had quite enough soda. Should we go and sit over there? smiling at us. We don't like people who smile. <laughs> Is that better? Well, now he's staring at you, Bruno. What are you staring at? Do you think I'm funny? Are you? Would anything make you fight? No, not today. There's, um, there's something you should know, but it's got to be just between the two of us. Of course. Thank you. Now, first, about Tony. He, he wasn't an artist. He was an agent working for NATO, and he was after some smugglers who were running guns into North Africa. Well, that explains a lot of things. The second, about the crash. It was no accident. I think they had to get rid of him. Now, Delano would be in that. You say you, you worked in his cannery, didn't you? Yes. Now, they have uh, an export trade. They... They use boats. You know your way around there? Let's go and take a look. Is there a back way out of this place? Yes. All right, let's take it. It's not going to be easy. The place is wired with the limes and there's a night watchman. Huh. Are the shed's wired too? Yes. Don't open it. The alarm will ring. All right. Make a new circuit. Get out of here, quick! Give me the torch! Surprise you, Mr. Delano. You followed us, didn't you? Arrest him. Oh, Captain, I think there's something here that you'd like to see. I only see tins of fish, Mr. Drake. I was afraid you would. You broke into private premises. Please. Assaulted the night watchman. Please. You're under arrest, both of you. But well, this is ridiculous. Harris, Tell us don't don't, let go of don't me. struggle, Miss Harris. We don't want to give them an excuse for shooting us while resisting arrest. We'll go with you. Very quietly. You need restrain yourself no longer, Mr. Drake. There are no witnesses here to see whether you resist or not. Shut those doors. Oh, that's Juno. Hey, Juno. 
Come here. It's Tony. Steady, honey. Steady. Time you boys started getting your stuff down to the wharf. The ship's coming in. Very well, Tony. Hello, Johnny. You almost did like to think well of your friends, didn't you? Johnny Drake, true, trustworthy, faithful unto death. Bartello, get the men started. Come on, Johnny. We don't want to be associated with gun runners, do we? Eh? I'll get the box on. No, of course there was no one in the coffin. Just 180 pounds of sand. I watched the funeral from the top of Delano's roof. Makes a change to watch your own funeral. Of course, there was one sad little figure walking along in the procession I wanted to call out to. Just one question, Tony. Why? Money. I've got to like money. Why the disappearing act? Because I had no choice. NATO had gone to me. I thought that death was the only way out, a funeral and a fresh start. What about me? I'd have sent for you later. You fool, Tony! Look, our people know I'm down here. I'm in touch with them every day. If I don't report back tomorrow, the police will be swarming down here in the hundreds. It won't work, Tony. Yes, it'll work. You go back to Palermo, you put in a negative report. You say you saw nothing suspicious down here. Now, you give me your word on that, Johnny, and you can walk out of here alive. Why should they trust me? Because I've convinced them of the kind of man you are. Mr. Costello has pledged his life on your word, Mr. Drake. It wouldn't do to let him down, Signor. You know, Tony, there was a time when you'd have understood that this was a waste of time. Now, look, Johnny, there's no alternative. There's no point in refusing. The operation's closing up. The guns will be out of the country tonight. We'll be safe, and if you refuse, you'll be dead. I don't know you, Tony Costello. I don't know you at all. Look, Johnny, you do this for me. You do it as a friend. You just give me your word. No waiting. Go on, Tony, get aboard. Joe? I'm not coming, Tony. You want to die? I'm not coming. Well, Tony, you heard what she said. I'm taking them aboard with me. They've made up their minds. They're not coming. Mr. Costello, you must come now. The ship won't wait. <laughs> so I don't have to think. It started and finished as my friend. What happened in between was an expensive experiment that had cost him his life.